Hello and welcome back to the World's RV Show going on now at Motorhome Specialist. My name is Donnie O'Banion um, and I'm here today with Joel Grimm, the National Sales Manager for Thor Motor Coach's Class A Gas Division. And Joel's going to be giving us a walk around today on the all new Challenger KT model and uh, showing us what's new and exciting about the, the product this year. This here is the, the Thor Motor Coach Challenger 37 KT model, a very unique floor plan. The Challenger product line is actually powered by the Ford V10 Triton engine, 6.8 liter, giving you 362 horsepower and 457 pounds uh, of, to of torque. It uh, sits on a 22,000 pound Ford chassis, along with 22 and a half inch Michelin tires, which will give this coach a better ride when out on the highway. Uh, first up in the front here, a few things to talk about. One is gonna be a safety feature with our side with our heated and remote mirrors. You'll notice here that the side vision camera is actually integrated up into the mirror. Couple benefits of it being integrated up into the mirror versus on the side of some other motorhomes is that it'll actually be in the furthest most uh, front part of the motorhome and up a little bit higher, which will increase your visibility when switching lanes. Uh, how this actually works is when you're driving down the road and you turn your blink or your turn signal on, the backup camera will actually switch over to this side vision camera and give, you, give the driver a viewing angle down the side of the coach where before they just guess and switch lanes, they can actually see any oncoming uh, vehicles next to them. Um, a few things to talk about on the Challenger product is going to be the basement storage on this coach. Okay, This is a full basement model. Uh, being our top of the line gas motorhome, this will give you as much basement storage as a lot of diesel motorhomes will. Starting with the storage bay down below here, the first thing you'll notice is going to be a side hinge baggage door. This is a nice feature so you're not breaking your back when you're trying to get down into the basement of the belly of the coach. A few things we do different at Thor Motor Coach, uh, if you look under here, um, is you'll see that giving you the pass-through storage here, you're going to see these steel risers, okay? They're 13 inch risers with 14 gauge steel. We do not use any sort of uh, outriggers off the main rail of the chassis. It's going to be solid steel running from one side wall to the next, giving your coach a lot more structural integrity. You're going to notice that the, all the storage compartments are actually going to be rotocast, okay? It's like a plastic material, very, very durable material. You're not going to find any fabrics or cloth or steel in the basement structure of this Challenger. The reason we do this is so if for some reason the baggage door gets left open and moisture gets in here, you're not going to get any mildew or mold buildup over time, and you're not going to experience any rusting down in the compartments of our rotocast uh, compartments. And it's much lighter weight as well, right? Absolutely, much lighter weight. Uh, the rotocast actually, too, will give you an R factor of about R4. Uh, it's not a huge R factor, but when you, when you take into consideration that the whole bottom of this coach is going to be lined in rotocast, it's just one extra insulation barrier from the outside temperatures through the subfloor in the bottom of the motorhome. Now, the neoprene isolator that, yes. that uh, y'all use, the Harmonix Deadener, um, I know it's in the Challenger and Daybreak. Is, is that throughout your Class A product lines? That is, it... is through our Class A product lines all the way down through the Ace Motorhome. It's, a, it's a, a piece of like tape neoprene that goes between the steel subfloor and the steel risers, which reduces the harmonic vibration. Also, a few other things to talk about down in the basement area. You'll notice here that we use an automotive bulb seal, okay? The reason we use this nice, thick automotive bulb seal is so that when you close the compartment door, it's gonna create a nice, tight seal so that no debris, road debris, or moisture will get down into the basement of, this, of the coach as well, okay? Um, a few extra things that we do here, you'll notice on this compartment door, this is gonna be a fully insulated door, and we also use a heavy gauge slam latch here so that when the door closes, it'll make a nice tight seal, okay? Kind of like exactly what you're gonna see on a, on a high-end diesel motorhome. Right, I like how y'all put the, uh, the shocks on these as well. A lot of other companies will just use some sort of little fabric yeah, link thing. Right. Uh, but this- uh, Just a strap or something, typically is what they're gonna put on them. Absolutely, and you'll see in the durability of it, you're not gonna see a lot of flexing in this door. So over time, this door is not gonna fall off on you. Right, okay. and of course, because it's side swing, the shock's gonna last a long time. Absolutely. It's, not, it's really not carrying any weight. 
Um, coming down to this storage compartment too, you're going to find another big pass-through storage. So with these two storage compartments open together, you're going to have a huge belly underneath this, this storage area here, which will be the most uh, exterior storage space in its class. Where here right, you can it. put golf clubs, you can put a kayak, you can put bikes under here. There's a lot of larger items that you can actually get into the basement of the Challenger. Okay. Um, another feature you're going to find right here on the sidewall uh, is going to be our exterior entertainment center. The Jensen TV is a great television uh, for outside use, which is why we use it on our Challenger product. And the, the stereo, is, the, is that a multimedia? Is that DVD? This is going to be well? a DVD and a CD player. So again, if you're sitting around the campfire, you just want to throw a, throw a DVD on, you can sit outside and watch a movie. Or if you want to crank the music up, you got Jensen speakers that complement the Jensen television, which makes for nice surround sound. If you don't want to watch the TV, just put some music on at night or in the morning time. You can just turn the radio on um, when you're sitting out camping. It's a really nice setup. Um, one other thing to talk about too in this little area is going to be your electric patio awning. Uh, one unique thing you're going to find with this 37 kT floor plan is that there's about 34 foot of patio awning that comes out here. You're going to have an electric awning that comes around the front part and then you're going to have a second awning that will actually be on the big super slide in the back. One nice feature uh, with this power awning other than the fact you just hit a button and it comes out is you're going to see that it's actually an adjustable awning. The awning we use on here is a carefree awning. It's got six different stages, so when the awning's out, when that sun comes down and it's in your eyes, you can actually take this notch here and adjust it to adjust the pitch of the, of the awning left or right, or if you want to keep the pitch consistent on both sides and just angle it further down, you can do, go on both sides and move it to this notch, this notch, so that you can keep that sun out of your campsite. Looks like it's got uh, both of these are 110 outlets here, so you can put up awning lights or awning lights, or if you got a little table sure. out here, you can plug in, you know, plug in some items, plug in a radio out here if you have an additional radio. You'll also notice too with our extra large grab handle here. Uh, this is a safety feature, and you're coming in and out of the coach. It's going to be a nice heavy-duty grab handle where these these uh, screws are actually anchored into galvanized steel backers. Okay. When we get into the inside of the coach and talk about our cabinets and a lot of things that are hung in the inside, uh, one thing we do consistent at Thor Motor Coach is anchor everything into steel backers in our laminated wall. So as you're tugging on this, going in and out, using your weight to go in and out, you're not going to pull this handle right out. But it is a nice big handle that you can run up and down here. Okay. Um, coming down here, it's going to be just a lot more storage. Okay. You'll have an LP tank on this side as well. And we'll talk about it more once we get inside, but this particular unit has the, uh, the new optional residential refrigerator in it. Yes, it does. So you're not going to be using a lot of LP, LP gas when you're having to travel L anymore. LP will just be used strictly for your furnace. If you're in cold climates, you want to turn your furnace on, or if you want to use your stovetop. Um, other than that, you're pretty much going to save a lot, of, a lot of LP and not have to fill up as much because of the residential refrigerator that's inside of this Challenger here. In this compartment here, um, you'll notice this is going to be a, a, a fresh water tank, okay? Um, with this fresh water tank, there's also your black tank that's on top. The reason you might open this up and say, oh, there's a fresh water tank on this side. What we do with the Challenger product is we actually run the fresh tank and the black tank the full width of the motorhome so that when there's water in there or your black tank tends to get full, um, the, the, the weight of the actual liquid will distribute equally from sidewall to sidewall so that when you're driving this coach, you're not going to have one side weighted down more than the other. So just better weight distribution and better obviously it's got to it's got to be a, a lot better ride and drive. Absolutely. Another feature you'll find on the outside, you'll see these probes and these wires that are actually mounted on the outside of the fresh tank. Uh, those will be mounted on the outside of the black tank and the gray tank as well. Uh, that is mainly an added benefit for the black tank, so that when you dump your black tank, you go inside. Uh, you check your monitor panel, it's going to show that it's actually empty. Um, unlike older motor homes where the probes are put on the inside and over time the crud builds up over right. it, you dump your tank, it gets frustrating, you go inside and you really don't know how much fluid is in, in all your tanks. But that won't happen with the Challenger product because our probes are all mounted on the outside of the tank. And how are they heated on the Challenger? Uh, the full basement here are actually, it's a full basement, they're heated when your furnace is turned on. It's going to be hot air forced down into your basement. 
uh, preventing all your tanks from freezing up. So it's just a little bit, a uh, little bit better than uh, traditional just electric blankets. Electric heat pads. Yeah, the heat you're pads. You're going to get like a that. much higher BTU uh, of, of heat force on them uh, versus just some 12 volt bl blankets that go over them. And that's the case on all the Challenger models as well as Daybreaks. That is correct. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. One thing we do at Thor Motor Coach is we build our coaches from the ground up. We build it just like you would manufacture a home. You're going to lay the foundation of the home, you'll put the sidewalls on, then you're going to put the roof structure on. We don't deviate from that. There's a reason they build homes that way. So when our coaches come from, from Moorride with all the steel trusses on the bottom, what we're going to do on this Challenger product is we've got a one and a half inch tubular steel laminated floor. We have our own lamination plant at Thor Motor Coach, so everything is done in-house. It's a humidity controlled environment where they're first going to take uh, tubular steel and they're going to cut uh, little pieces of low density block foam insulation that goes throughout all of the steel trusses. And then on top of that is going to be a half inch warehouse or structure wood. It's all going to go into a vacuum bag and be compressed down to form one solid piece. Industry standards is about 25 minutes in, in the vacuum uh, bag. We actually keep them in for about 10 minutes longer to assure that there's no separation in our floor, sidewalls, or roof structure over time. So as you have your, your, your one and a half inch laminated floor, we'll actually put that down on top of the Moride uh, truss system. When we set it down there, what Moride does for us by laser cutting all of the truss systems is that they ensure that between the front right corner to the back right corner, across to the back left to the front right, there's less than one eighth of an inch difference in height from one side to the next. That's very, very wow. critical when you're manufacturing a motorhome. By building it and putting the, the, the foundation down, if you're not setting that subfloor on an evenly flat surface, when you start putting your walls on and your roof structure on, you're not going to get a perfectly square box, okay? Which leads to some gimp molding, which is putty that's filled in around the, the corners of the sidewall and roof structure because it's not a perfectly square box. You will not find that in the Challenger or any Thor Motor Coach products because of how we manufacture. Okay, um, So you have an inch and a half thick laminated subfloor, half inch warehouser structure wood. Uh, warehouser is a nice piece of wood that it will actually not absorb moisture and is not going to warp over time. Our warehouser structure wood we, that we use is actually uh, purchased in sheets of 24 foot long by eight foot wide. So on a 37 foot motorhome like the Challenger here, you only have one seam, which is typically between the bedroom and the bathroom. By having less seams in your motorhome floor is gonna reduce the opportunity of any floor separation or any squeaky floor over time. And traditionally they use 10 foot sheets. So on a coach this size, you're gonna have a minimum of four uh, four seams, four seams. In, in most motorhomes. Yes, that is accurate. Mm -hmm. It costs a little bit more buying them in bigger sheets of, of, uh, of wood like we do, but we feel there's an added benefit to the customer down the road that the floor is going to stand up and not going to squeak and not no opportunity for floor separation over time. Right. Okay. Uh, then our sidewalls are put on. Our sidewall is actually going to be a completely vacuum bonded sidewall. Uh, it's all going to be one and a half inch tubular aluminum framing that goes from one side to the next. Uh, we take it a step further and all of our window openings are actually all going to be framed in aluminum as well. Why do we do that? Well, when you frame a window in aluminum, there's going to be some integrity there so that the window doesn't bow on you over time. Uh, but also when we screw our seals in here, it's going to create a nice tight seal. So you're going to reduce any opportunity of water intrusion getting into this wall, which over time could cause delamination and it also will make a nice quiet ride because you're not going to get any wind noise when you're going down the road. Okay. Again, it costs a little bit more adding more aluminum uh, through each, especially on this floor plan through all the windows. But over time though, there's going to be a lot of add benefit by doing that. Um, our gel coat wall here is going to be about a quarter inch gel coat wall. Um, the Challenger is going to have full body paint standard on it. We are using Sickens paint on our Challenger product, benefits of Sickens paint. The Sickens brand paint, it never actually fully cures. You don't get the spider webbing over time like you do with the other products you see in the clear coat. And you know, you look at the sidewalls and they're just kind of spider webbed or cracked. Right. You know, you find it on all of your uh, high-end automobiles, on yachts. It's used on a lot of different uh, high-end products. Okay. 
Going to the top of the slide outs, uh, you'll notice that there's going to be slide topper awnings on all of our slide outs. That'll be standard on all products that we manufacture at Thor Motor Coach. Keep the debris, keep the pine needles, keep all that stuff off the top of your slide. So when you leave the campsite and you go and push your slides in, you're not taking any of that debris inside the motorhome with you. Then when you come around to the back here, again, talking about exterior storage, uh, the back two, three compartments here, you're going to get even more pass-through storage. So you've got about six compartments on the Challenger product that are going to give you complete pass-through storage from one side to the next. You will not find another motorhome, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in this Class A market that will have as much exterior storage space as the Challenger can offer you. It looks like it's completely si uh, side swing baggage doors down the passenger side. Correct. I would assume it's the same way on the... It'll be the same way on the other side as well. Coming around to the rear cap here, one thing you'll notice with our rear caps, which is like our front caps, is they're going to be a one-piece molded fiberglass cap. It's not going to be two or three pieces put together like other motorhomes that you may find in the field. Uh, by having a one-piece cap, one, the looks of it, it looks nice, it looks high-end, uh, but the biggest thing is you're not going to have any opportunity of any cap separation over time. You'll see here up on the top, you're going to have your backup camera. That camera can actually be adjusted, so if you have a tow vehicle, you can change the angle on that camera to face further down, looking at your tow vehicle to make sure that it's still with you over time. Uh, and if you're not towing a vehicle and you want to get a view further out, you can just adjust the pitch on that backup camera to look further out. Okay. You're also going to notice here a LED brake light. Okay. Uh, that's an important safety feature there, so if you are towing a vehicle and you hit your brakes, if there's a car behind you, that car is going to know that you're stopping so they don't run into the back of your tow vehicle. Right. Okay. Which you won't find that on a lot of caps. So no, I mean, it makes a lot of sense having it mounted up high. Absolutely, so that you can see it. Coming down to the hitch, you're going to get a 5,000 pound hitch rating on the Challenger. Um, it will come equipped too from the factory with a seven way round plug that is already pre wired for brake control. So if, if, if you want to hook up a tow vehicle, all the wiring is already done at the factory for you. And of course, with the ladder, this is a full walk on roof. Yes, this is a full walk-on roof. Uh, you'll have a ladder here, easy to get up to. All of the, the ladder is actually screwed in the, uh, again, galvanized steel backer, so it's not going to rip out of the rear cap. And you're going to have an aluminum framing system up on the, on the top of the roof, which will be a full walk-on roof. So if you want to go up there, put some lawn chairs up there, uh, you know, if you go to a NASCAR race or something like that. Right. Uh, but mainly if you want to get up there and clean the roof of the motorhome, uh, it's easy to get up there. The, the roof material that we actually use on, um, on the Challenger product is called TPO, thermopolyolefin. Okay? The biggest benefits of the, of, the, of the TPO roof is it's basically it's a maintenance-free roof. You want to get up there a couple times a year, uh, soap and water, scrub off any dirt, check all your seals, make sure the dicor up there isn't, isn't spider cracking or, or dry rotting with, with, with the heat in the summertime. Um, it's a seamless roof rip and tear resistant, uh, it's algae resistant, which is a nice added benefit if you're down south where the humidity is really bad. Right. Um, and it's got a 12 year warranty on it. So, and that's the best I've heard, I mean, in the industry. Yeah, it's so pretty much as long as you're gonna own this motorhome, your roof material is gonna be protected by the warranty. Uh, coming around to the back of the coach here, you're gonna have a little bit more pass-through storage. Uh, the Challenger does come standard with a 5.5 Onan generator. Uh, which will make this coach 50 amp service, which you'll see there, the 50 amp power cord plug. Uh, with, along with the 50 amp service coach, you're gonna get two AC systems that are standard, both 13,500 BTU. Uh, everything in this motorhome can be powered by that 5.5 50 amp service coach. Fuel fill on this side, uh, the Ford chassis has an 80 gallon uh, fuel fill on it. And then this compartment here is going to be your termination center, okay? This is where all the fun begins. <laughs> I noticed uh, you've got a, a drop, now, uh, drop now for the sewer hose to where you don't actually have to bring it back inside the coach. You can just hook it up once and run it out through, run it out through here. And this is on a, on a swivel. Uh, so, you know, again, you're not having to unhook the hose and store it back inside the, Correct. Inside the bay. Mm -hmm. It'll store in its own little place there. Very easy to operate termination center. You'll notice everything is nice and neatly labeled. 
Uh, it does come standard with a whole house water filtration system so that when you're brushing your teeth, you're doing dishes, you're taking a shower, uh, not knowing what campground you're at, all <laughs> that water will be filtered for you. You will ha also have a sewer tank flush, which is standard on the Challenger product, so that when you're going to go clean your black tank out, hook a hose up there, it'll basically spray water through that black tank to keep all that crud and stuff from, from building a nasty odor over time. Right. City water connection fill, uh, when you're going to be hooked up at a campground for a while, you'll just simply take a water hose, hook it up here, and this will be your supply for, for fresh water. And you're also going to get a hot and a cold switch here on the outside shower, so that if our, you, you are using your termination center, you get a little stuff on you, you can spray yourself off, or if you have lawn chairs, you want to wash the dog outside, sure. you've got a nice shower. Just a lot of extra attention to detail. This is normally something that, I mean, from other manufacturers, you open up a, you know, a utility bay, and it's pretty nuts and bolts, and sometimes they're split between two bays. Uh, but again, just a lot of attention to detail. Um, made it a really nice, nice utilities bay. Coming down to the rest of the coach, you're just going to pick up a lot of exterior storage that's passed through from the other side, which we've already talked about. Here you're going to see your 5.5 Onan uh, generator. A couple things to talk about with the Onan generator. It's the most fuel efficient, quietest generator in the marketplace. Also the positioning of our generators, you're going to notice that it's in the middle of the coach, not underneath the bed, so that if you're running the generator at night, it's not going to vibrate and make a lot of noise and keep you up throughout the night. Right. The generator is bolted to steel brackets. It's not bolted to the subfloor. Um, so that when this thing is running, if it is vibrating a little bit, it's not going to transfer that noise and the vibration through the floor so you hear it on the inside. Um, another little safety feature uh, on this Challenger product, you're going to notice how we strategically place the hot water heater in the furnace. You'll notice they're on this side of the coach, not on the camp side, so that if the water heater is running or the furnace is running, they're not going to be on the camp side so that if you have little children running around the campsite and they bump into it, they don't burn themselves. The hot water heater that we, that we use in the Challenger is, a, uh, is an Atwood hot water heater. It's a six gallon gas and electric water heater. The nice thing with this Atwood water heater that we use is the recovery rate. The recovery rate is actually 17.8 gallons per hour. So even though the actual tank size is only six gallons per hour, it's the recovery rate that's important so that you're gonna get almost 18 gallons of hot water per hour. So if you wanna take a, a little bit longer shower and not have to take a military shower, you'll be able to do that with the Challenger product. And having both the gas and electric element, uh, again, you're gonna be using very little LP gas. Once you're at the park plugged up, you know, you can use the, the gas to get it hot quickly, but then, you know, ma basically maintain it through the, through the electric element. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Another little thing to talk about here, which I didn't talk about on the other side, is going to be the slide system that we use on our Challenger product, okay? This will be also consistent throughout all of our Thor Motor Coach product lines. Uh, it's called the Schwintech slide system. It's a, uh, it's a system uh, by Lipper Components. The nice thing with this Schwintech slide system, you're going to notice that there's a, a little rail down here at the bottom and on the top, okay? You'll find that on both sides of the slide out. So that when this slide, it's an electric slide system, when this slide goes in and out, you're going to have a track on the bottom and the top on both sides of this slide to assure that this slide is going to go in and out even every single time. Uh, older styles that you'll find, one are hydraulic systems. Along with the hydraulic system comes a big ram that goes down, which will take up exterior storage space. You'll right. notice with the Challenger product, uh, this here is what we call our belt line where the subfloor is laid and then you get your belly or your, uh, your basement storage down here, you're not sacrificing any exterior storage space because you don't have big rams that are actually going down into the basement of the, of the coach. Right. How this system operates, uh, you're going to have two motors. One motor will actually be on the top near that uh, uh, rail up on the top there, and then you're going to have a motor on the other side. So two motors actually operate this system. Um, the nice thing with this system is that if one of those motors fail for some reason, there's a little control box that's actually that's mounted down in the storage compartment where you can take two plugs and pull it out. So if you get stuck in a campground because your slide won't go in, right. you simply unplug those two, uh, two plugs. You get a couple people at the campground to help you push it in. Once the slide room gets manually pushed in, you take those two plugs, plug them back in. It sets a brake on the motors and you can take it into a service up. 
much, much easier than the hydraulic systems especially. By far. By far. And something else that y'all do on, uh, on your products that uh, is really rare and you know, something that's important to us because you know, down here when it's 105, 110 degrees in the summertime, we get so many coaches, especially in our uh, pre-owned inventory, when the side rooms are in, you go to bring them out and the gaskets are Correct. coming off. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll see them stuck outside the coaches. Uh, Y'all's are not glued. They actually are built inside of a track. Correct. Uh, inside there to where they can't ever come loose. And that's a, I mean, that's a really nice feature. Uh, best, um, to the best of my knowledge, are the only ones that are doing that. That is accurate, yep. And, and you'll appreciate it. I come from Florida myself, so when it gets <laughs> 100 degrees out and the humidity is really bad, it's very common to see these seals falling off of motorhomes on dealerships, lots, or in campgrounds sure. because the heat just melts them right off of there. But yes, we are one of the only ones that are, that are putting them in these tracks. It's a really nice feature. Besides the KT floor plan and the Challenger line, what other floor plans are available right now? Other floor plans that are available, we offer the 36 FD, which is our bath and a half full wall slide, uh, washer dryer prep. We also offer the 37 DT floor plan, uh, which has a his and her vanity back in the bathroom area. That's nice. a really popular floor plan as yes, well. Yes, it is. Nice big shower. Uh, it's got an L-shaped sofa, one of those extendable sofas, midship television, extra large uh, U-shaped leather dinette. It also comes equipped with a side-by-side uh, -side refrigerator in it. And the newest uh, floor plan is the GT? The GT, yep. The GT is actually a concept that we took out of from the fifth wheel market where it's got an island kitchen in it. Uh, where it really makes you feel like you're at home. It's got a 32-inch Sony TV that actually will pop out of the buffet table area um, so that when you're viewing TV, you can keep it up, or if you're not, you can keep it down. Completely unique look. And we have some of uh, each one of those models actually in stock, so if somebody wanted to go to mhsrv.com, they could take a, a look at the interior photos of those and, and uh, see some of the differences in the floor plans. You know, the, the thing about the KT floor plan to me, um, you know, real, realistically, you know, I don't know how y'all promote it or sell it, but, you know, I've always uh, shown it to customers as really the only two-bedroom yep. motorhome in the industry because uh, the sofa here is going to pull out, of course. Um, what, type of, uh, what type of sofa system are these coming with? Are they a hide-a-bed sofa? This is a hide-a-bed sofa with an air mattress and a pump built right in. It's a very simple system. Uh, all you'll do is you'll simply take the back of this sofa You'll pull it forward, it'll flip forward. There's an air mattress that's in the bag. Uh, you unzip the bag, you roll it out, you plug the pump in, and you have yourself a nice sleeping area. And then when you're done using the, the, the bed, you just simply deflate it, roll it back up in the bag, and flip the sofa forward. I mean, it gives you a great living room area, but you know, at night, for, for couples who want to take, you know, especially other adult you know, mm -hmm. friends, you know, are not you know, relegated to you know, sleeping out in the kitchen area, essentially. And you know, you've got your own private private doors here. Um, of course, a fireplace, um, you know, a really large LCD TV. I mean, it's a great second bedroom. Yeah, that's exactly what, what makes this floor plan so popular. Uh, if you have kids, you can take kids in here and they have their own bedroom. Uh, if, you, if you have another couple that comes with you, sure. they have their own suite, and then you go back in your bedroom and you have your own suite. So really, the two bedroom concept is really what sets this floor plan apart and makes it such a popular popular offering. Um, with the furniture too, something to talk about, uh, we're using a very high quality comfort fit by Villa Furniture um, on the sofa and also the captain and co-captain chairs. That's a very soft plush synthetic leather, uh, but comfort fit by Villa is a, is a very nice high end brand of furniture that we use in the Challenger here. And it's a great arrangement for even when you're traveling. You know, a lot of floor plans are great when the side rooms are out. And then you bring them in, you lose, you know, uh, access to certain rooms. Uh, you won't be able to see the TVs when the slide out room comes right. in. Now this is a great place to be able to buckle up the, the kids where they actually still have a seat belt. You know, they can watch television, play games when they're going down the road. Yeah, and the nice thing is too with the sofa being right behind the driver and passenger chairs is that in a lot of floor plans, the sofa will be 20 feet behind so that when you're traveling down the road, whoever's traveling with, with the driver and the passenger can't really be part of the conversation, where in this floor plane, you're right behind them so everybody can talk with each other without a problem. Come towards the back here. Yeah, and then of course, the uh, um, this is a, a newer option, correct? This is a newer option uh, just in the 37KT floor plan. Uh, all other floor plans have an option for a LP gas, electric, 
side-by-side uh, -side refrigerator with the with an ice maker. Where in this 37 KT, we've gone with a Whirlpool stainless steel 11 cubic foot residential refrigerator. And this will, uh, with this option, comes a uh, an inverter. Yes, so with this coach will come an 18 watt inverter, uh, and with this also comes an auto gen start. Uh, so if you get in a position where your battery shut off for some reason, opposed to all your food just spoiling because your refrigerator is operating off of battery power, your generator will, at, will automatically kick on um, and turn the inverter on, which will charge your batteries so that your, all your food inside your, your, your fridge and freezer don't go bad. And then, of course, because you're going to be, because it's run off the inverter, when you're traveling, the batteries are just continually charging. So, again, you're not using any LP uh, gas, you don't have to worry about the pilot light getting blown out while traveling. Yep. So it's just a lot more reliable. You're also going to notice too, you're going to have a 30 inch over the range frigid air convection microwave. So it's going to be a residential style. Um, this coach here is actually equipped with the, with the, uh, the optional oven as well. Okay. I traditionally bring them in with, uh, with both in a larger coach like this where you, you, know, you already have uh, so much storage. Um, and, you know, we still get a lot of um, uh, ladies and, and men alike requesting to have the, you know, the large gas oven as well. You know, it's where they have two places to, two places to cook. And the new black splashes and stuff, you did a great job. Thank you. With the uh, all your solid counter, surface. All your countertops are solid surface countertops, which will be standard build. Um, you'll see here, nice thick solid surface countertops. And then you're also going to get an undermounted sink here so when you're cleaning off the countertop you can just brush all the crumbs and stuff right into the double bowl sink and then you're going to have a sprayer here a faucet with a sprayer that actually pulls out and uh, two choices of, of cabinetry two choices of cabinetry this coach here that we're in is equipped with a vintage maple cabinet or you can also go with a little bit darker cabinet um, which is our our uh, Olympic cherry, which gives it a little bit more of a red tint to it and a little bit darker. Uh, the vintage maple is kind of a little bit more in between a, a dark cherry and a light maple. And you had mentioned outside something uh, about the cabinets. You were going to talk a little bit more about uh, how they're actually mounted yes. in, the, in the coach. Yes. Um, first and foremost, with our cabinets, you're going to get solid fronts here. Um, but with our cabinets, uh, what we do throughout the sidewalls in the back here is we run a little uh, three inch galvanized steel strips that are in our laminated wall and through our, our board here. So then we anchor our cabinets in, they're actually anchored in the steel backers versus anchoring them just into the block foam insulation or maybe into the aluminum framing. Um, the benefit of anchoring them into steel is that as you put goods and stuff in them and weight in them over time, these cabinets aren't gonna start sagging on you. They're always gonna keep their position because there is structural integrity behind it. Now keep the squeaks and rattles out of them in the years to come. You'll do that too, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, this is another really unique feature about the floor plan. It's, you know, the split, uh, you know, dining and, and living areas. The dinette table actually has uh, leaves on both sides. Yeah, it has at least on both sides. It'll come with two additional folding chairs. So if you have another couple over or a couple extra people, you can pull two more chairs up that match the decor color so everybody can sit around this table. Also, what makes this floor plan very popular is that these big three windows here, okay? Sure. This is overlooking your campsite. So when you're sitting in the morning, reading the paper, having a cup of coffee, uh, you got some nice big windows to overlook your campsite, which also lets a lot of light in here. Uh, so you don't feel like you're really confined in a, in, a, in, a, in a motor home. And it's surprisingly rare. Most of the dinettes are going to be on the driver's side of the coach yeah. uh, in most floor plans. The bath is also designed uh, quite different than, than most floor plans because you've got access to it um, actually from the master bedroom as well from out here. So you can close it off. Uh, um, you can close off the master bedroom. And of course, it still has complete access for all your guests. You're going to get residential porcelain toilet, residential glass shower door. Um, you're really gonna get a bathroom in here that makes you feel like you're back at home. Um, while we're looking down at the floor too, you'll notice the linoleum floor that we use. Uh, the linoleum is run all the way up to the cockpit of the front of the coach, 
all the way to the back of the motorhome. So there's very, very limited carpet in this floor plan. Uh, really the only carpet that you're going to get other than in the cockpit area is going to be on this slide room right here. So when you're out camping, there's no more track and dirt in and having to worry about ruining your carpet. It's all linoleum. Uh, simply just take a broom, sweep it up. If you want to put some throw rugs down, you can put some throw rugs down. When they get dirty, you just take them outside, shake them out, and you're good to go. Back in the bedroom area, one thing that sets this floor plan apart is that it's actually equipped with a residential king-size bed. Okay, so no more cramming yourself into a bed. You're going to be able to sleep in a bed just like you have in your own home. Um, one thing we do a little different than a lot of the competition is we actually put a, uh, a hospitality mattress. It's a Denver mattress, um, which is a very, very comfortable mattress. Uh, it's like a, it's a foam mattress um, that when you sit on, it's going to give you the support that you need when you sleep. Uh, a lot of motorhomes, you get them sit on the bed and your butt goes right down to the wood sure. plank. They're going to buy the cheapest mattress yeah, this, <laughs> they can. This is where a lot of manufacturers will cut costs is in the mattress, where we actually spend a lot more money because you're going to spend a lot of your time when you're sleeping in the bedroom on your mattress. So you want to make sure you get a good night's sleep. Really nice residential style headboard as well this year. That's got a great look to it. Lots of big storage opening from front to back here. Uh, you're going to get a his and her shirt closet, one on each side. And a big, uh, big chest of drawers down here. Uh, looks like two more, two more closets. And uh, it's got some additional storage back behind the the LED television. So I mean, you know, that's a great place if you want to put a safe. Absolutely. You know, or something like that most, in the coach. Most people won't think to uh, to look back there, but it just shows how we use every every bit of viable space. We're we're not going to let it go to waste. Um, but with these new LED flat screen uh, TVs that, that are as thin as they are, it allows us to do so. This bedroom TV is actually a 12 volt TV too, um, so that if you're not running your batteries, you can, you're not running your generator, you can still watch this television. And it's great to see y'all are putting uh, much larger televisions in the bedrooms now. We are, yes. Because uh, um, you know, that's where most people are going to watch most of the television, you know. I mean, it's great to have the feature TVs when you've got mm -hmm. family and friends over. You know, you're watching the game, that kind of stuff. But, you know, again, you know, when you're out RVing, you know, you're on the go a lot. So you're absolutely. not always inside watching TV. But at night, it's great to have a good-sized TV. And it's in the center of the room. You know, instead of, you know, a lot of them are mounted, you know, down side. low or off to the side one, one way or another. So there's even just the placement of the TV is really nice. One last thing with this bed that I always like to point out, uh, again, about using every bit of storage space as possible is the amount of storage that you have underneath this bed. Uh, this here is where your two folding chairs for your round table can be stored. But you're also gonna notice on this side here, a huge area to store extra pillows, comforters, blankets, uh, stuff that you may not use all the time. You can just put it right under here. Uh, and it's all nice, clean, finished, all wood framed around. There's no exposed wood. Um, but a nice, a nice finishing touch to the bedroom area. Residential one inch wood pocket doors, okay, versus maybe some accordion doors. Uh, latches and locks right up top here. When they pull over, they just lock right into place. You'll get that on this side, the bathroom as well. Uh, anything new for the, for the dash? Yeah, actually up in the dash area, um, one really nice feature is you're gonna get a computer tray here. Uh, most people take laptops with them now. Um, so that when you're, if you're using a navigation system, your lap system, just playing games, just using the internet going down the road, this table here will actually come out. Uh, if you're not using your computer, it's a great place to, to have a snack or eat a sandwich when you're going down the road. Okay. This will pull out here. Another new neat feature that we have up in the front area, which really turns this into a nice living room, uh, which comes standard on the Challenger product, is this little table here. Gives you an added little place, set your drinks. If you're turned around watching TV, uh, you can put your laptop on this as well if you wanna play cards, uh, have a little meal up here. If you don't wanna sit back there and wanna watch TV in the main living area. Sure. Um, but this is a really nice added touch that we've added to the Challenger product uh, that seems to be very well received by the public. Uh, it just makes it uh, a great usable space now with the driver's and passenger's chair. Uh, you know, if it's a forward-facing television, you know, or a feature wall television, you know, having the chairs that swivel 
uh, is uh, is really nice. But like I said, with the addition of this table, even in a floor plan like this, I mean, it makes the the seats that swivel um, just a, a really nice feature. A couple other things on the front dash here. Uh, this here is going to be an iPod docking station, which comes standard. There's actually adjustments or different little things that go in here. So if you have an iPhone, you have an iPod, a Nano, whatever size Apple uh, system you have, uh, you can actually, it's a charging station too. So you can plug it right in here. If you got your iTunes on your, on your, on your iPhone, you can run the music straight through the surround sound system and also use it as a charging station. This is something uh, that really you don't find in any other coaches and it comes standard on the Challenger product. Your Jensen backup camera. Um, this is going to be an LCD color monitor, okay, so that when you're looking behind you there, you can get a good uh, visual picture of what's behind you. And when you turn your blinkers on, this is where the side vision cameras that we talked about and the heated remote uh, exterior mirrors, that picture will pop up right here on this main screen. Very, very nice safety feature. You're also going to pick up weather band, so no matter where you are traveling through the country, you can flip weather band on and find out what type of weather you're in or what type of weather you're about to go into. And then you've got a little USB port here and auxiliary in as well. Okay, it does come Sirius ready too. So if you decide you wanna have Sirius uh, radio going down the road, you can simply have that installed, run right through this main monitor here, not have to have an extra panel that's mounted to the top. Well, it's just an incredible coach. It really is, you've done a great job in, uh, the floor plan design and the amenities. I mean, the coaches, Challengers never looked better, had more. Thank That's you. for sure. You've done a great, great job on the coach this year. Thank you. Appreciate well, thank you so much for coming Absolutely. out and Thanks walking us through us. the through the coach. And um, uh, I know uh, there's going to be a lot of people enjoy walking, uh, watching your walk around. Thank you very much. Uh, folks, we'll be back uh, here at the World's RV Show uh, demonstrating the ACE uh, later on this afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you in a little bit.